Hello everyone, Marcus Wolf here, welcoming you all back to another episode of Disco Elysium. Sorry about that, my uh, <laughs> my throat is being a little bit wonky right now, so don't mind if I sound a bit, sound a bit, you know, off. It's the weather, honestly. It's California weather. This year's been a bit nuts. It's like cold, now it's warm, went back to cold, then warm again, it's gonna cool down again. It's... Sudden weather changes, I, my body does not agree to sudden weather changes, and I always get cold-like symptoms. Now, I'm crossing my fingers that I will not get a cold, although that's up in the air at the moment. And also, don't mind if I sound tired, because I'm, I'm trying not to overexert my voice. It's gonna be a regretful thing. But, we shall persevere for the sake of this video. I am torturing myself. <laughs> so, last we left off, we... Oh god, we listened to a tape, and it pointed that maybe Classier was sexually assaulted, and maybe the Hardy Boys were telling the truth, we don't know yet, there's just a lot of moving parts. But we're not gonna do that yet, because I want to talk to this gentleman here, who is, well, by that statement, I don't have clients, I have friends. He is a gentleman of the evening, yep, I was right, I was right. A maroon glow of light pollution rises from the east. Now that said, I am not putting shame on him when he says that. I I, I really, I really don't. But I kind of got a feeling that when the caretaker or the one that like takes like care of the maintenance and basic stuff here said, "Huh, he doesn't have friends." Yeah, sure, he's only around at nine at night. You know, it's like in a very knowing way. It's like there's only no way. <laughs> of course, I thought about quitting, but what for what? I guess there's not much for quitting, huh? Anyway, hello, sir. John Demarie, you found me. The young man on the balcony gives you a bright smile before taking another drag from his cigarette. His slender figure is backlit by city lights, its distant streets and motorways flashing like diamonds. Uh, sorry, one second, my computer's being a bit funky dunky. There we go. Sorry about that. Uh, what was that? His slender figure is backlit by city lights. It's dis distant streets and motorways flashing like diamonds. Got it. We found a key hidden under a stone. Was it yours? It was mine. My friends use it from time to time to visit me. As he looks at you, something sparkles in his eyes. So tell me, are you here to make things right again? Well, honestly, I'm just trying not to screw anything up. Beautiful. He says again. A nearby street lamp casts shadows on his chin, drawing out the slender cheekbones. I have some good news for you. My Sunday friend is visiting me tonight. I told him about you and he'd like to say hello. Step in. He's already waiting. He nods towards door 28. What am I walking into here? <laughs> what did I... What did Harry do? Uh, assumedly Harry, what did he do while in a, uh, amnesic stupor? Huh. Why would I want to meet your friend? Trust me, you do. Alright. Uh, by the way, I'm really digging the view here. Mm-hmm. That's why I chose this place. Martinez is special, isn't it? Wait. Suddenly you are digging things? The lieutenant whispers to you, shaking his head. But just, just go with it, Kim. We, we might get something from this, okay? Um, if you don't mind, I'd like to talk to you first. I, I do have a lot of questions that I feel need answering. That's nice, but I don't have anything to tell you. It's my friend you're looking for, not me. He takes another drag of his unfiltered cigarette and looks around. It's getting dark and the neighboring windows have lit up. One by one. Downstairs, a cat crosses the yard, disappearing into the bush. Besides, I've got to run. Something tells you you're never going to talk to an individual this cool or mysterious ever again. Run? Where? To the city. It's a beautiful night. Well, only if you promise that we'll talk again. It's important. Something flutters in the corner of the lieutenant's mouth as you're saying those words. 
We'll talk. Just not tonight. Take care, all right? Oh, he says with another disarming smile before slipping off into the night. So he is willing to talk, but he has someone else doing the talking? I, I guess he really is concerned for his safety, but yeah, I do hope that we'll talk another night. I hope you'll be alright, like, seriously. And he's gone again. Looks like it's becoming a theme for him. <sighs> There's something so different about him that I, I just can't put my finger on. Different, of course. Well, he is a, a good listener. I like talking to him. You like talking to him? The lieutenant squints his eyes, trying to hold back laughter. It made me feel special. It made you feel special? He's Wait. barely holding it together. It's all he can do to keep from bursting out in laughter. Okay, I can see where this is going. And also very strange, it's like all I heard was radio static from someone's speaker area. That That's kind of a strange way to... To, to state that there is a ellipsy silence. Kind of strange. Come on, detective. Let's go. We've got a potential witness to interview. His Sunday friend, remember? He nods at the apartment door before you. Well, yes, his uh, very beautiful Sunday friend. Who am I going to be talking to for this one? Uh, is it, watch is going to be someone I know. <laughs> oh, this is going to be interesting. Oh. Oh. Well, you know what? I shouldn't be surprised. A gentleman that looks well-kept. Then again, I, I, I suppose governmental issues take all over Revishal, as you can see. Are you a government official of some kind? Uh, well, you know what they say. Some, some closeted government officials are the ones who, oh god, who are trying very desperately to hide themselves yet have some fun. Find a very discreet fellow. I guess. <laughs> a quarterly business magazine. Uh, let's see. An old photo at the same apartment, dated year one. Expensive men's perfume lingers in the air. Uh, Party Dragon's silk robe. Dude. This is either for a wonderful night, or there's some role playing going on here. I'll take it. That looks cool. I want to see that. I do I do legit want to see that. Party Dragon Silk Robe. This sle sleazy. It looks nice. Is it, can we really call it sleazy? <laughs> this sleazy, silky ba bathing robe in vibrant blues features a roaring dragon on its front, ready to take off into the night. A red belt has been provided for fastening. It's culturally insensitive, but only for people... Who are not from Seoul. Sail. The real sail lights probably don't care. I mean, I, I guess I can see why it would be considered culturally insensitive. Because it is kind of taking the design and styling of Seoul. A.K.A. Eastern culture. But as long as you're not being overtly improper about it. Then I guess it, I, I can't see why it would be insensitive. Unless, unless it's talking about, you know... Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, uh, um, suggestive of having sex, which then I can see why it would be, but then again, people fetishize weird things. I mean, who am I to judge? I mean, we all have things we fetishize to some small or large degree. He becomes a dragon. What, what, what does his jacket do? A spirit that call and shivers. Mm, you know what? I'll put this on. Maybe the gentleman I'm talking, oh my god. I forgot I had the mesh shirt on. <laughs> it kind of looks interesting with the mesh shirt on. You know what? I'll just... What if I took my pants off? <laughs> what? what am I saying? It's like, just, let me just take my pants off and then let's go. God, I'm just burying myself in the hole here. Okay, let, let, let's, let, let's be done. Get, get me out of here, please. Actually... Wait, where are my other gloves? Oh, it's what I do have on. Never mind. Oh, I accidentally equipped it. 
Well, you know, I don't need interfacing, I think, when talking to this gentleman, so... I'm doing everything I can to try and have as nice a chance to talk to this gentleman as I can. Otherwise, we could have some slight issues. What do these pants do? Self warfare minus. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, that's fine. Conceptualization. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I think we're fine. Okay. Uh, let's be re. Oh. Wait, is. Wait, is the thing. Oh, it looks just like that. It's actually uncovering a part of his shoulder. I can see why it could be sleazy then. Yeah, I can see why it's sleazy now. Oh boy, it really shows off... Shows off a shoulder. Ooh. Anyway, uh, that's enough of that. Uh, let me go into the ba- Uh, let me not go into the bathroom. Uh, look at this. Buckets of paint on a layer of old newspapers. Paint on old newspapers. An exquisite canopy bed made of metal. Dishes soaked up in a pot. An empty ashtray. There's a lot of things that we can see in this in this place. Flyers for underground parties. Oh, okay, okay. Underground clubs, underground parties. Yeah, a little bit of the nightlife, the wild side. Yeah, I'm, I'm digging this guy already. <laughs> Dates for open lectures at an op open lectures at a local university. Like, actual dates for open... That could be two things for th for this man. He could really be interested in those lectures. Or, he's interested in those attending the lecture. Could be two things. We can't really say for sure. And both are very plausible. I mean, I'll leave it up to your imagination on how to believe that. And we can look underneath here and find ourselves a samurai conical hat. Really? Really? A samurai conical... Why? Dude, are you Samarin? Like, seriously, are you Samarin? This tawny cone-shaped hat looks like a beacon of Samarin wisdom. Its straw sticking up like antennas. Thank God you can't really see people's reactions when they see you strolling around in this incredibly insensitive headpiece. That is... Okay, this part, yeah, it's kind of dated and very stereotypical. So I, I can see this being insensitive. Insensitive bachelor party vibes. Super logic for a cop to wear. Super logical for a cop to wear this. Uh, nah, I'm fine with that one. I'll, I'll not put that on. I'm gonna save myself the issue. Anyway, Sunday friend, who are you? In a wider sense, this is actually my apartment and yours. Really? Hello. You have acquired the robe. Keep it, officer. It looks good on you. Oh. Wait, really? You want? Wow, I was just kidding around, thinking I can get a better stats talking to you, but wow. Wow, I totally just randomly got some bonus... <laughs> some bo- some- some bonus discussion points, I guess. Yay. Uh, thank you. His hands are clean and well manicured. This is a man who knows the importance of appearances. My name is Charles Vildroin, and I am an official with the coalition government. I work for the Institute of Price Stability on assignment from Surlatli. Charles Via Durun, and an official with the coalition government, work for the Institute of Price Stability from Surlatli. Okay, that, I like that French accent. I really do. I heard you talking to my friend outside. Very good. Super. I am here to assist you in any way possible. Ask me about the hanging. Hanging? What's a drag? He seems like a cultured gentleman. You should ask him about the finer things. Um, now before we get to that, uh, do you think you could tell me where you got this beautiful silk ro robe from? It really is beautiful. Oh, we got it from an atelier in the East Delta Commerce Center. Personally, I think it's a little culturally insensitive, but the material is great. Sadly, the shop is now out of business. That's really all I can tell you about it. He forms a little rooftop with his fingers. Cold air sweeps in from the balcony. The lieutenant takes out his notebook and nods to you to proceed. Alright, so, um... What's an official like you doing here in Martinez? The coalition is only looking out for the price stability. Inflation is a killer. 
like a heart disease blocking the normal circulation of the economy. It must be controlled. The economy impacts the entire international community, which is why it requires international oversight. Okay. But... What are you doing here in this apartment? Ah, uh, well, I'm renovating it. It is an interesting project. The building used to be a 12-story skyscraper before the cannons took the top four stories off. This, of course, happened when the coalition forces landed here. You could say I'm undoing some of the material damage the international community caused when we arrived here. Okay. So... When all is said and done... So, sorry. What is this international community? La communauté internationale is what Rivacholians colloquially call the coalition. In other words, the nations that stopped the disaster of the revolution. And what is the price stability? It is the most important thing. Uh, sorry, but that doesn't quite tell me anything. It's the central goal of any sound monetary policy. Maintaining the price stability is essential to maintaining high levels of economic activity, which is essential for maintaining high levels of employment. Okay, so basically what's happening right now in 2024, uh, U.S. economy, all the inflation talk and <laughs> unemployment numbers. Okay, okay, I, I can kind of understand it then. I mean, I don't understand economics much anyway, which kind of says something <laughs> that I'm studying. <laughs> Accounting. <laughs> I mean, that does like big macro stuff. I, I'm not saying that big stuff. I'm just like office work studying for accounting, office accounting. Ugh. But okay, I, I can see what he's doing then. Which is essential for maintaining the social stability. Basically, it makes sure the price of bread doesn't change. Precisément. Too much inflation, bread becomes too expensive. Too much deflation, it becomes too cheap for bakers to produce. That's why the Institute of Price Stability works to keep inflation just below 2%. Um, I have a feeling I know what you're getting at, but just in case. 2% of what? But not too far below, no. Too below is also bad. Below, but close to 2%. I I'm sorry, but you're, you're not really answering me. The Coalition believes in the importance of informing the public about the benefits of the price stability. Transparency is one of our principles. Would you like an informational pamphlet? Sure, of course. I, I, I would love to. A sound monetary policy is essential for addressing uncertainty. Stability is the raison d'être of the moral term. It's the reason why I identify as a moralist. But, oh, I don't have my leaflets on me today. That's too bad. You can always call our information line. Making information available is part of the moral intern's commitment to transparency. Huh. I've heard about this moral, int moral intern before, but... Do you think you could tell me more about it? It's the International Organization for Moralists. Hence, Moralist International. The Institute of Price Stability is just one of its many mind babies, as is the Coalition. Oh. So, Kim, we're actually working for the moral intern. Doesn't seem too bad. There are more nefarious powers to work for than the moral intern. Hmm, fair enough. Um, so sir, are you a moralist? But of course. Why? Because moralists believe in a normal, stable world governed by democratic values. Okay. And what is your definition of a normal, stable world? The Occident is part of the normal world. Oranier, sur la clé. Uh, Martinez hasn't seemed very normal or st stable. Martinez? No. Martinez is something else. And what about the rest of Revachol? Is it part of the normal world? Revachol is generally difficult. It's led by an interim government, which means it hasn't yet achieved full democracy. But they are working towards it. You're all doing very well here, relatively speaking. He gives you an approving nod. Hmm. 
<laughs> Option D, none of the above is that moralism. <laughs> uh, I'm not always choosing option D, so I, I can't really say that. Oh, dear, that's interesting. <laughs> well, moralism is the ideology of foreign occupiers. Ravishol must be governed by Ravisholians. <clears throat> Of course, the detective's personal views do not represent the views of the RCM. Your full autonomy is important, I agree. But it's an ongoing process. Nothing happens overnight. Now, enough of this delightful political interlude. Was there anything else you wanted to ask? Um... So, when all is said and done, are you some kind of bureaucrat? Yes, as I said before. I am a commissioner from sur la clé working for the Institute of Price Stability. This is one of the main projects of the Moral Inter. Wait, there isn't actually an Institute of Price Stability, is there? Or maybe there is. God, it's impossible to understand whether someone from the Moral Inter is joking or not. Well, he has talked a lot about inflation. I mean, like, uh, keep it below, keep inflation below 2%, but not so far below, or we, uh, make everything cheap as sin and kind of destroy, kind of destroy the economy. Or, I think that would make the economy go into a depression, wouldn't it? Sorry, not depression, a recession. I think so. Being in the United States, I think 2000. Eight interest rates were were down the toilet, and we went into a recession. You you would think things got cheap, but then again, you know, it's <clears throat> like too 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 much of a deflation, and we're in trouble. Too much of an inflation, we're in trouble. It's a balancing act that I don't care to get into, even though I'm studying accounting. I, I'm not going to go that high up the totem pole. <laughs> um, do you mind telling me about Sir La Cliff? What's there to say? Sur la Clé is a modern, urbanized country that measures very high on the Human Development and Freedom Index. Mostly, though, it's known as the executive heart of EPIS. Moreover, it is a great sponsor of less emerged countries. Revachol is only one of its many darlings whose progress it supports and cherishes. Darling? That can't be an official designation. And what exactly makes Revachol Sir Cliff's darling? Because a great percentage of Revachol's culture hails from Sur la Clé. Its language, its people, its cuisine even. Or at least in the downtown La Delta area. Jamrock and other parts of the international zone have been mercifully spared of Sir La Clé's love for meatballs and mashed potatoes. <laughs> love for meatballs and mashed Swedish meatballs and mashed potatoes, I guess. <laughs> huh. Okay, so basically you are saying, if I can read this again, <clears throat> that Sir Le Cleef, or Sir Le Clef, however you want to pronounce it, depending on your accent, I suppose, measures very high in on the Human Development and Freedom Index. So basically a first world country. Moreover, it is a great sponsor of less emerged countries, of basically second, maybe even third world countries. Revachol is only one of its many darlings where... Whose progress it supports and cherishes. Uh, kind of makes me wonder what would Ravishol be classified as? I mean, Ravishol is recovering from a war, yes. I, I, I suppose we don't have enough information per se. Well, I wouldn't say it's a third world country, would it? I mean, we're a puppet. Uh, Ravishol's a puppet state. But does that automatically designate a third world status? It is possible it could be second world status. But then again, I don't even know what second world country stands for. All you hear is like first world and third world country. So, eh, whatever. But it sounds like he's saying Sir La Clef is a first world country. Uh, how about Orangye? Orangye is an exemplary nation who, as a core member of EPIS, contributes 28% of our annual budget. Next to Sur la Clé, Orangye is probably the most prominent member of the international community. So you guys are basically like a version of the UN? Uh, Orangye and Sur la Clé? <laughs> um... How, but outside of the EPIS, what is Orangye? 
Oranje's economy is one of the most advanced in the world. It has successfully transitioned from heavy industry to advanced services and generally acts as an engine for sustainable change in the international community. But that didn't tell you anything about Oranje. Well, I've once heard from here that they are a reasonably sized superpower. That's one way to put it, yes. They certainly have the power to exert influence over others, but they only do it in the name of regional stability. After all, Oranje is a moral intonation, not some crazed mesk petrofascist state. Moral intern. What, what does moral intern mean? I mean, we probably discussed it before, but it, it, it just went over my head at the time. <clears throat> but from what is discussed, it's like trying to do the morally correct thing. Try to be morally democratic without going too far one end and too far the other, while also keeping an eye out on the finances of the world. So they're basically a, a financially... Uh, a, f a financially suited mindset, I suppose. I guess. Well, anyway, that's enough business. Why don't we talk about something else? Whatever you wish, officer. So, did you actually witness the lynching? I'm sorry to say I did, officer. Oh. But well, this is the break we've been looking for, Kim. Easy, detective. No need to jump to conclusions. He eyes the spec spectacled man near the window, who smiles and spreads his hands. So, uh, let's go ahead and start from the beginning, if you don't mind. Officer, it's very difficult to describe what I saw that night. It was so surreal to me, like in a play. He holds out his hands and blossoms his fingers, like a drama teacher set in the scene. What do you mean, like in a play? It was just so strange. I could barely comprehend what was happening. I was on the balcony when it happened, getting some fresh air. I remember that first they came in, carrying what looked like a body. And then I saw all the surrounding windows go dead, one by one. That's when I understood. I should not be seeing this. Okay, that's kind of creepy that everyone sees it and they're like, Okay, you know what, we're not seeing this, bye. That's... That's kind of creepy. <laughs> and then here's this man is like, what the frick is going on? Uh, hmm. Sounds like the victim was unconscious, or at least incapacitated. Well done, detective. Um, who were they? Could you describe them for me? I couldn't see their faces well, and there were quite a few of them. But they were very loud and very... Martinez. He pauses, looking for the right wording. Let's just say that the laboring classes can get rather expressive with their profanities. Of course. Um, how many would you say were there? I couldn't tell you exactly. Less than ten. Maybe eight? The lieutenant sends you a sharp look at the mention of that number. Maybe eight, in matches with what we got. Could you tell if any of them were large? Like, mm, about 200 kilos large? That's a giant you're describing. No, they were all quite human. As far as I could tell. Okay, uh, what happened next? I went back inside. Were you able to see anything from inside? Officer, the yard was pitch black. There was nothing to see, but I could still hear their voices. They were threatening to kill that poor man. I don't know. Do you know if they were men, a woman? All men, I presume. But again, I couldn't see very clearly. Hmm. But we are fairly certain the lady driver was present. The lieutenant flips through his notes. Yeah, we're very certain of that. Oh, so that's cool. So we got this first and then not figured all that. Then we don't have this to piggyback off. Okay, that's cool how everything connects. There's no one correct way to do this story. I, and I love that. You could have done all this first and had less information than I have because of how I did my storyline. That's very cool. Are you sure at least one of them wasn't a woman? It's possible, officer. But I cannot say with certainty. It was very dark, you must remember. Uh, of course. Um, could you say what ethnicity they were? I believe they were mostly white. Though I believe I saw two Aeropagites among them. And I am quite certain that one spoke with a Mesk accent. Two Aeropagites and one Mesk. Huh. What happened next? Well... 
that's the strangest part, officer. Nothing happened. It was oddly quiet for a public lynching. Wait, I'm sorry. Nothing happened? Well, something clearly happened. I mean, they lynched a guy right out there on a tree. Eventually, their shouts died down, and that was all. There were no gunshots, no celebratory shouts, no anything. Oh, you're right. That that does seem kind of strange. I'm afraid I don't have anything else to add. About what time was all this happening, approximately? All I can say is that it was late. You didn't happen to check your watch? My watch? Yes, now I remember. It was 30 minutes past midnight, give or take. Okay, so to recap. You didn't actually witness the hanging itself, did you? No, I didn't see the corpse until the following day. It seems this wasn't the break you were hoping for. I think we have everything we need. Thank you for talking to us, Mr. Villodroin. Of course. Anything I can do to assist the RCF. Of course. Um, if you don't mind before we leave, could you tell me a little bit about your friend? Ah, my friend. My friend is a good young man. His family immigrated here from Kedra, and life has not been easy for him. But he understands the importance of education. He has taken his future into his own hands, and that's all that matters. Yes, but you still haven't told me who he is. Sorry, who? The man throws a quick glance at his watch. Your friend, the smoker on the balcony? We were just talking about him. But I told you, officer. He's a bright young man here to pursue his education. Education is the foundation of our future, especially the arts. It is a cornerstone of our civilization. Yes, uh, but how about his name? Officer, you have to understand. I can't give you his personal information. I'm sure you have your own methods and databases, right? Please don't put me in this situation. Okay, so all you can tell me about him is that he's here to study arts. He's deeply enmeshed in the study of the fine arts, yes. Which one? He's a truly free spirit. He likes all the arts. Perhaps graphic design, printmaking, who knows? The world is open wide for a talented youth like him. And how did you two even become friends? <laughs> He's definitely a politician. He's artfully dodging all the questions without really giving the straight answer. He's really a politician. I got no answer. How did any of us become friends? Bad things happening on the insulin Peninsula? Oil platforms ablaze in the night? Civil wars lasting for years? Finally, the international community is forced to step in. Uh, I'm sorry, what? I, I can't imagine people becoming friends that way. Au contraire. It's how millions of people end up where they are. Meeting the people they meet. It's how I came here. And my friend, too. Okay. Um. So what are you doing in this apartment by yourself? I'm just enjoying the view. The man smiles, nodding to the window. Uh... Well, if be that as it may, isn't it rude for your friend to leave you alone like this? We're old friends. Nothing's taboo between us. He comes and goes. I'm sure you'll see him around. He's very active. Okay. Um, if you don't mind, I heard you mentioning that the man came from Kedra? What's that? Kedra is a candidate member of APIS. But, between you and me, their potential membership is a more contentious issue. Why is that? That it's never going to happen. They enter negotiations in 21, and it's been pending ever since. Uh, I'm sorry, but I've heard you mention uh, the EPIS many times, but I don't think you ever really explained what it is. EPIS is a very special program developed by the Moral Intern to support certain Occidental nations. It began as a unified system of weights and measures, which proved to be a wild success. 
Nothing but kilograms and centimeters as far as the eye can see. God, yes. Sweet standardization. The backbone of rationality and commerce. It was such a wild success that we expanded it into an economic union for the processing of steel. Another success. And between you and me, the moral in turn feels emboldened by this success. Emboldened to take EPIS to the next level. Okay. And what would be on the next level? A supranational political alliance. The United States of Occident. A supranational political alliance. That, that sounds rather ambitious, I, I will admit. Is it going to be like this place here? You mean Revachol? No, it's going to have transparent democracy. Hmm. Very ambitious, yes. Will Revachol be part of the EPIS by chance? It's one day going to be a candidate member of EPIS, sure. Except that candidate members never become full members, do they? So, candidate member... Correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't you say earlier that candidate members never become real members? No, no. Candidate members do become members. Why do we even have the whole system in place if they don't? It just takes time. Time and evaluation. But we were talking about my friend here, not politics. He chuckles gently. I want to see what the other I'm choices are here. Yes, you, you've mentioned that before, but... I'm sorry, but how? There's a dead body hanging out in the tree. A dead body we still need to get down, by the way. Oh, God. <laughs> Listen. He says, raising his hand. The baby is crying in the neighboring apartment. Yes, someone's baby is crying. No. Listen. He says again, looking outside. The Insulindian Bay. What about it? This place used to be a luxury accommodation before the revolution. Apartments, of course, were much bigger then. A few walls have been added here and there, leaving some of the tenants without a private bathroom or a kitchen. But the million real view stays. You can't take that away. He knocks on the balcony door, his face mirrored in the darkened glass. I I'm sorry, but I was asking about your friend. My friend comes and goes. I'm sure you'll see him around. He's a busy bee. A busy bee? What an odd choice of words. I'm inclined to believe that this gentleman here is, uh... Yes, they're friends. I think more maybe possible of a client that became a friend. But... <laughs> And if that is true. I do like the writing, how they're, how they're not saying, it, it, and it, that's, it, that is if it's true, which I'm feeling like it's implied it is, <laughs> that they're not saying directly that, oh, I am a client of his and having the time of my life every now and again when I visit. No, it's artfully dodged, like a politician, like a politician responding to a question. The question is just, dodged continuously and you don't get a straight answer and yet oddly enough the non-answer can be an answer itself just based on what we're what what we're noticing what we've heard of the other guy and how this guy doesn't seem to know much about the other person except that he likes the fine arts <laughs> kind of very interesting i'm all ears officer well and i'm afraid that's it for the moment thank you so much a moment Officer. Y yes Do you have everything you need from me? I'm afraid we won't have the chance to speak again once you leave. Uh, why? It's against diplomatic best practices for an official in my position to be discussing murders with local militiamen. And I'm pressed for time. After you leave, I should be leaving as well. That's not the real reason he's so apprehensive. Men in his position shouldn't be seen loitering around in underprivileged young men's apartments in the middle of the night. Exactly. So you see, 
it's never it's never specifically uh, stated, but considering his position and uh, what we know about the young man, yeah, there's a little bit of nighttime shenanigans going on, getting a little bit uh, a bit of fun time in the bed, make making their own little artistic pieces. Yeah, I <laughs> think you know what I'm saying. So there is art going on, just not the uh, conventional art that most people would think of although it could be an art depending on how it is approached i will admit that but most people will not think of it as art when at, at first thought when you mention art <laughs> well i'm not going anywhere just want to just take a look around in this apartment sure go ahead it's a beautiful space let me know if you have any further questions so basically, I will never see this gentleman again. That's good to know. Well, unfortunately, I think this is all I can get. Not to mention that the man really didn't say anything of great importance. But, you know what? Was there anything else? Uh, tell me about your friend again. My friend. My friend. Uh, what about him? Was it this I'm one? Just oh, yeah. View. What view? It's dark outside. Listen. The baby is cr No, the insulin Oh is wow. Used, but the million real views, my friend. A busy bee. What an uh... odd choice. Sorry. But I told you, officer. Officer, he's deeply in man. He's a truly free spirit. How did any of Au contraire. Kedra is a ca that it's never going to happen. They enter negotiations in 21 and it's been pending ever since. I'm just trying to hear as much as I can for this gentleman before he leaves. <laughs> But that doesn't tell me anything about Kedra itself. Is it warm, cold, somewhere in between, hell on earth? It's warm. It's also known for its mandarin trees and dust storms from Supramwindi. Kedra's an emerging market, but it still has a long way to go. Maybe that's why my friend's menage decided to emigrate. I'm all ears, officer. Of course. I'm sorry I... Uh, wait, 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 I'm sorry, there's one more thing that, uh... I'm sorry to say I did, officer. <laughs> That's because you did. No, let's not do that. He holds up. What do you mean? It was just... I was on the balcony. That's when I... Sounds like the victim was... I went back. Were you able... Officer... Well, that's the strangest... Eventually, their shouts died down, and that was all. There were no gunshots, no celebratory shouts, no anything. And why didn't you call the RCM? You're right, of course. That is what one is supposed to do in such circumstances. I was simply in shock. I'm afraid I don't have anything else to add. About what time was all this happening, approximately? All I can say is that it was late. My watch. And then yes, no, watch, I yada yada yada. I think we... Of course. Anything I can do to assist the RCM. Yeah, that's all. I'm... Yes, and then you're once I leave, you're you're done. So good to know. I I really didn't get anything. I mean, <clears throat> he did say less than ten, probably eight people. We confirmed as eight people. He can't say if it was a man or woman. He confirmed that two people looked of a certain race, and one had a very distinct accent. Uh, but he did mention something interesting. It was oddly quiet for a lynching. No shouts, no heckles, nothing. So what happened at that moment? Did the eight of them hang? I, I know the Hardy boys, or Titus Hardy I should say, he himself said, yes, we, we lynched the guy. But it doesn't... I wouldn't say that it doesn't add. This door is made of metal, and no one answers. Oh, let's go. Damn There's that! Nothing. Damn that man! Really did? Did he just jump out the window? <laughs> Where did he go? He just jump. I think the man just jumped out the freaking window. <laughs> anyway, uh, what is this? Are you serious? Can I not? Can I wait? Wait! 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 Can I equip? Oh, I already have it equipped. Never mind then. Okay. So, I don't know where this leads, but maybe we'll figure out someday. Actually, can I go in through there? I'm just being morbidly curious. I cannot. So, why would that door be open? Kind of interesting. 
Oh, well, that's fine. Well, I can go down from here, and... We have... How much time? We have 36 minutes to go to Classier's place. Classier? Yeah. Go back to Classier's place again and talk to her. Because she said she was going to be here un up until, uh... 11. So we should be good here. I don't know what happened to this gentleman here, but, uh... I wonder if this person got killed. <laughs> I wonder. I don't know. That would make me feel so bad if he did. Because it, it said that the place smelled like disinfectant. So, yeah, yeah shut up. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, shut up. So, yeah, let me go ahead. Oh, oh my god, can you please? Let me go ahead over back to Classier. Uh, make sure that she is still there. So I have an idea of what I will be doing in the next episode. And at the same time, I'll go ahead and actually start winding down. I'm surprised. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, no. The book appears to be erotica, but without actual erotica. Oh, really? I thought I saw something amazing, and it ends up it wasn't amazing. That's perfectly fine. Um, Let me make sure that Classier is there, and I remembered the time properly. P please, let me through. Uh, again, yes. Let me go ahead and wind things down. Uh, thank you for watching. I'm quite honestly surprised that my voice lasted as long as it did because it's it's I, I can feel it starting to go down it, i i can feel it so hard <laughs> and it's it's just what it is but i mean some i'm i know some other youtubers they, they they still push through it i'll try to push through it if my voice dies then you'll see that there oh thank god she's here you'll see a little pla uh, video that says i am sick for a week because my voice always takes a while to recover but yeah, she's here, and we will take care of things in the next episode. Later, everyone.